Hi there, Steve Kaufman here. Today I want to talk about literacy, dyslexia, and compare it to my struggle to learn the Arabic writing system. Now, this all started when someone asked, I think on Facebook, how I went about learning the Arabic writing system. Now there are various systems out there, but all I did essentially was to download uh, a list of the Arabic letters in all their four forms uh, for each letter and uh, slowly start to read using our lessons at Link. Uh, the big advantage at Link is that we can actually sound, I as a user can sound out each word or even a phrase or a sentence or whatever. So as a, if I read, if I look at the word and I try to piece together what letters they are and very often I get it wrong, I can hear it. And so be, by doing that and continuing to do that and at the same time, because at Link in our five activities, one of them is dictation, I can then hear a word and attempt to write it and immediately see if I got it right or wrong using the Arabic uh, keyboard that I have on my iPad. So just by continuing to do this, my brain gradually got more and more used to the Arabic writing system. When I read stories at link, our many stories, I tend to do it in the sentence mode. And you can find the sentence mode uh, on the website by adjusting, there is a setting there and you can have one sentence show up or the whole, uh, you know, I think it's called page size or something, but you can see very clearly in the settings that there's a place where you can set a two sentence mode. Mostly I study on my mobile device, there we have sentence mode in the sort of beta version that I'm using, it will soon be available to all users. But on the website, and you can, do, you can access the website from your mobile device as well, there you can use uh, sentence mode. So with sentence mode, I'm dealing with a small chunk of, of Arabic writing at a time. I can listen text to speech to the whole sentence. I can listen to the individual word. So, you know, I read it. I'm not confident that I read it correctly. And so I can hear it. Now, why does all this matter? It matters because in Arabic, uh, it's not obvious, it's not always obvious from the letters that are there, even if you actually identified the letters correctly, which, you know, I don't always do yet, but I'm getting pretty close to being there. But you don't know what the vowel sounds are in many cases. And so I find that with Arabic, uh, you know, until I know the word, I don't really know how it's pronounced. I can't just tell by reading it which we can do in Spanish, for example, uh, which it's not quite as easy to do in English, but in Arabic it's even more difficult. So now there are sounds in Arabic that represent vowels. There are these little diacritics and stuff like that. Uh, I tend to ignore them. You know, maybe I'm wrong, but that's uh, to me, it's just clutter. Uh, because apparently, uh, when I eventually do start reading Arabic or look at Arabic signs, if I'm visiting an Arabic country, these little phonetic markers are often not used. So really, if, if the only purpose of these is to enable me to decipher these words, then I just as soon rely on the audio and I can rely not only on the text to speech, which is sometimes not accurate but I can also hear the uh, natural voice say these sentences as I go through these sentences. So I might try to read it once without any help. Then I listen to the text to speech and then I listen to the natural voice. So uh, essentially I slowly, slowly get used to the writing system. I find that if I pick up a book where I can't interact with the text, I can't hear the text to speech or the natural voice, it's more difficult. However, words that I have already listened to while reading in Link or because I've listened to these stories 30, 40 times, then I've heard these words so many times that I know the word. I know what the word sounds like and therefore I'm able to read it. So really, I, only, I can only read what I've already seen before. So I, I was thinking about all of this and I'm saying, 
you know, I'm sort of in the position of someone who has severe reading problems, who has a low level of literacy uh, or possibly is dyslexic, who can't make out what the letters are supposed to uh, read like. And, um, you know, a lot of people suffer from low levels of literacy. And it's important to remember that from an evolutionary perspective, uh, our, you know, ancestors, the cave people, uh, didn't read. It's something relatively recent that we have this ability to record stuff in, in writing. Because prior to that, people would simply have to repeat what they heard. So as storytellers would repeat the same story century after century. Nowadays, we have the ability to record it as a written text. Well, recently, much more recently, we have the ability to record the actual voice. And of course, the ability to use these uh, voice files has become more and more sophisticated. Uh, and so now we have the ability, if we read on a mobile device or on the computer, we can actually hear the words, um, text-to-speech version, or I can actually you know, find that audio track from the audio track from the uh, the narrator and hear it. So we have an ability now to access the sort of audio uh, in a very you know flexible and, and and effective manner. So how does this relate to dyslexia and and literacy? Well, it, it has been demonstrated that uh, you know there are people who have trouble listening. Uh, people who have listening difficulties uh, typically develop reading difficulties. Uh, and this can continue through to their adult life. Uh, so in the workplace, for example, that can be a big disadvantage. Uh, so I was thinking, you know, maybe this idea of isolating sentences, providing the audio for that sentence, natural voice, as well as providing the individual audio for individual words and phrases, and, and encouraging these people who have trouble reading to use audio in order to get used to the words. Because if, if essentially, in my case in Arabic, uh, when I do start reading, essentially I, I believe that I'm only going to be able to read words that I've already heard and that I will guess at the pronunciation and meaning of other words or look them up. But uh, essentially, I will be dealing with words that I have heard. So if a person who struggles with reading and has dyslexia has a strategy of doing so much listening that they will develop a vast vocabulary of words that they have heard and heard more than once so that as they encounter words, they're not forced to decipher uh, the pronunciation letter by letter which is in a way, in a sense, my strategy with Arabic. I, I, I'm unable to decipher the pronunciation letter by letter because of the inconsistencies in, in the Arab writing system. But if my strategy is to do so much listening uh, and acquire this vast vocabulary of words that I have heard and which therefore I recognize, then my reading is going to improve. So the question is, I wonder if what I'm going through as someone learning the Arabic alphabet and learning to read in Arabic in any way is similar to the struggles of someone who has trouble deciphering letters, uh, spelling, has trouble reading, and whether there aren't some solutions there. Because literacy is, is an enormous, uh, you know, has an enormous economic and therefore social cost. So, there you have it, just a thought on the application of, of my experience learning Arabic and some of the functionality at link to a larger uh, societal problem, and that is uh, literacy and the various reading disabilities that people have. All right, I look forward to your comments. Thank you for listening. Bye for now.